Fry's Electronics was an American electronics and accessories big box store chain that opened in 1985 and closed in 2021. If you've clicked onto this video, then you know what today is. It's Throwback Thursday. Every Thursday, I'll be releasing a new video of an old video that I did before. These new videos are longer and have more detail than the ones before. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell so you get notified of my latest video. Be sure to leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video. Thanks for watching. Summertime is sizzling at Fry's Electronics. Get the hot new Sony 4th generation touchscreen Ultrabook, now $1,249.99. It doesn't get much hotter than Norton 360 Premier Edition with projection on up to three PCs, now free. After all rebates, in-store price $64.99. This Sony 4K Ultra HD TV is smoking hot, and it's now at Fry's for $6,999. And remember, your best buys are always at Fry's, guaranteed. The first Fry's Electronics opened on May 17, 1985, in Sunnyvale, California. The company was founded by three brothers. John Fry, Randy Fry, and David Fry. Their father was Charles Fry. Charles had founded a grocery store chain in 1955 that grew to a chain of 41 Fry's food stores in the San Francisco and Phoenix, Arizona markets. He sold the business in 1972 for approximately $14 million to Modesto, California-based Save Mart Supermarkets. His son John worked for his father's supermarket chain, managing the computer system. Thus, he not only learned the techie mindset, but also had the low-margin grocery business that would later serve him well in selling electronics. After selling his chain of supermarkets, Charles Fry reportedly gave each of his sons $1 million. John Fry now convinced his younger brothers to pull their money and launch Fry's Electronics. Also joining as a partner was his former girlfriend, Catherine Calder, who would become an executive vice president. True to his roots, John Fry conducted business supermarket style. The company opened its first electronic superstore in Sunnyvale, California. Once foot traffic was high enough, he began selling shelf space and charging a premium for the freestanding placements located at the end of the aisles. The money was then used to buy newspaper advertisements, which, like supermarket ads, lured in customers with specials. Because Fry's sold snacks to its clientele of high-tech workers, it would even use the old supermarket ploy of loss leaders, for example, selling Coca-Cola at a loss to get customers in the door. Once inside, they would face a shopping situation similar to that of a supermarket. Should they buy the name brand product or the cheaper no-name product offering more features sitting next to it? In the case of the latter, of course, Fry's stood to make a higher profit. Fry's was a geek paradise where electronic components, computer peripherals, as well as TV sets and stereos were sold along with candy bars, high caffeine soft drinks, razors, toothpaste, and even adult magazines. High tech savvy customers were also attracted to Fry's because of its assortment of hard to find components and bargains. An entire computer could be pieced together cheaply from parts available at Fry's. In the early days, Fry's featured a blowout table where items that needed a little fixing could be bought for pennies on the dollar. It was also establishing a personality that either did not bother its core customers or was something they were willing to overlook. Fry's hired people with little technological knowledge at rock bottom wages and not surprisingly, they were not much help on the sales floor. Then again, there was simply no one in the store could hire who could match the technical expertise of Fry's customers, so why bother? If you had shopped at this store like me, 
then you knew that its return policy sucked. Returning merchandise was also problematic as customers found themselves bouncing from the cashier to the returns desk and back again. Receiving a refund instead of a credit check required the persistence of the truly dedicated since Fry's employees received a bonus based on their ability to get customers to take store credit. Even after a customer accepted the latter, weeks would pass before a customer received a credit check in the mail. Insiders called this policy the double H, which stood for hoops and hurdles. One ex-employee said that the point was to wear customers down until they gave up. Because the pay was low, employee turnover was high, but that didn't matter to management as long as there was someone waiting to fill that position. Fry's instituted strict security measures, fearful that its employees or its customers might steal the merchandise, and with good reason. Employees were virtually frisked at the end of the day, while customers had to run a gauntlet of security guards before leaving the premises. Instead of stock rooms, inventory was stacked in the open, and the stores were laid out so that blind spots where merchandise could be tucked away were eliminated. A multitude of security cameras, generally hidden from view, surveyed the floor. Eventually, even dumpsters were randomly sent to headquarters where they'd be checked to make sure someone on the inside was not attempting to smuggle out merchandise. A second store was added in Fremont in 1988, followed by a Palo Alto location in 1990. Unlike other big box retailers, Fry sought less expensive out-of-the-way sites in office and industrial parks, rightly believing that its customers would be willing to go out of their way to shop at Fry's. Fry's began adding entertainment to the mix, hiring a former designer from Lucasfilms to create fantasy settings. Fry's would spend $1 million on each store, and as the number of stores mounted, so did the unusual nature of the motifs from Alice in Wonderland to an Industrial Revolution era factory, from the ruins of uh, ancient Rome to the history of cattle ranching, from the lost city of Atlantis to the history of the Las Vegas Strip. Fry's moved outside the San Francisco Bay Area in 1992 with the opening of a store in Los Angeles. By 1995, the chain would double in size, operating 10 stores located in Northern and Southern California. In 1997, Fry's expanded beyond the state by acquiring the six-store Incredible Universe electronic superstore chain from Tandy Corporation at a cost of $118 million. Incredible Universe, launched in 1992, attempted to emulate Fry's success by opening massive stores averaging 185,000 square feet. The Fry's formula continued to work as customers lined up for hours before a new store opened and were willing to endure long lines and frustrating service. Throughout the rest of the 1990s, the chain added just one store, a second location in the Phoenix area. Historically, Circuit City and CompUSA were major competitors in the computer space, but they collapsed during the late 2000s recession, leaving Microcenter and Newegg as Fry's main competitors. By 2014, Fry's Electronics operated 34 brick and mortar stores in nine U.S. states, California, Texas, Arizona, Georgia, and one in Illinois, Indiana, Nevada, Oregon, and Washington. In September of 2019, customers were finding barren shelves in most stores, speculating that the chain was about to fold. Fry's responded by stating the company was just changing to a consignment model with its vendors and was not planning to close any stores. On the evening of February 23, 2021, several internet sources began claiming employees were given notice that all remaining stores would be closed to the public nationwide, with the Fry's.com website scheduled to go offline at 12 a.m. The company deleted its Facebook page. New at six, customers are in mourning, the end of an era 
uh, San Jose-based Fry's Electronics suddenly closed all of its stores today. KPI X5's Kit Doe explains the Superstore played a role in shaping some of the most legendary technology to come out of Silicon Valley. For all the nerds and geeks out there, all the DIYers, the tinkerers, lovers of electronics, this one hurts. Are they closed? Within hours of the company's announcement, a steady stream of longtime customers came to the flagship store on Brokaw Road in San Jose in grief and disbelief. This used to be the electronics guy's heaven for Founded in 1985 in Sunnyvale, they grew to become an electronics retail powerhouse. Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak, shopping for parts at Fry's to build their earliest devices, cemented the company's place in Silicon Valley history. But then online retailers changed chipped away at its business, and Fry's tried to adapt by offering internet price matching and same-day delivery. By 2019, empty shelves had everyone asking what was going on. The company denied they were going out of business, saying they were switching to a so-called consignment model. And then this morning, released a statement saying, after nearly 36 years in business as the one-stop shop, an online resource for high-tech professionals across nine states and 31 stores, Fry's Electronics has made the difficult decision to shut down its operations and close its business permanently as a result of changes in the retail industry and the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. On February 24, 2021, Fry's Electronics officially closed all of their stores. So what are some of your favorite memories of this place? Leave a comment or a suggestion for a future video below. Be sure to hit that like button. Thanks for watching.